Hey there, Block of the Monthers, and welcome to my Quill Lab. It's Cynthia here. I'm working on the Illusion Sampler pattern. I'm doing a crazy quilt version. We are working on month 11. That's this guy right here. We are so close to the end. Ah, oh, so excited. Look at all this beautiful fabric. And of course, you can find links for Scott and Banyan Batiks and the quilt shop that I'm working with in the description below. Give me the thumbs up and let's get started and see what month 11 has in store for us. All right, so let's review what we have here as far as fabric is concerned. Of course, all the cutting directions are right at the beginning for each section. We got some background too. We got uh, four smaller squares and eight slightly bigger squares and then four rectangles right there. That's background two. Coming over here to fabric number one. This was a square originally that they had us cut down diagonally. So one, two, three, four. So a square cut diagonally both ways. And down here at the bottom, you'll see fabrics three, four, seven and nine there's a couple of squares and then there's one smaller square that was cut diagonally once as well so let's see what our first step is and get going all right so grab those eight bigger of the squares and then the two each they're all the same size and guess what we're going to do that's right, have square triangles to grab a ruler, grab a pencil, or some type of writing implement, and let's review. Uh, so in the directions, it says to draw a line down that middle diagonal, and then we're going to sew on either side of it a quarter of an inch. But you know me, I like to break out my little quarter inch ruler here because it lets me draw all three lines and not just that center line helps me out you know a little less thought process when I have to take this to the sewing machine there's several versions of this ruler some of them have this little diagonal line in the center some don't some it's just the the two lines on either side it's up to you if you want to purchase one of these on your own I'll put the link to this one in the description below and there we go we have all three lines that dash line that's the center of course and we're going to pair all of these up with one of the squares put the same sides together and then you're going to actually stitch a quarter inch on either side so i'm going to stitch on this solid line after i'm finished stitching with all of them i'm going to cut on that diagonal line like I said I got all three lines it's nice it's nice because I don't have to think about it as much once they're all flipped open uh, pressed open towards the that uh, pretty dark dark side the color to four different color fabrics we're gonna probably trim these down because you know he likes to make these a little bit bigger than uh, it calls for in the pattern and then that's nice because we don't have to worry about being completely accurate i love that i love a little extra all right let me take this to the sewing machine and i'll be right back all right so there's the one that's squared down and i thought i would square this one down on camera so you can see what i do uh, you're going to need a ruler that has the 45 degree angle on it. That's, at least this is what I do. This is how I make an accurate cut. Um, most of your standard rulers will have the 45 and sometimes will even have the 60. And so what I'm doing is I'm lining up that 45 on that diagonal so that I know this, this is how we square it. And I'm scooching that ruler up as far as I can up into that corner so I'm not taking off as much. So I'm going to, after I've got everything lined up, I put my hand down securely and I swipe the two sides. This process is a great way to utilize that rotating mat if you have one of those because then you, in, when you pick up your ruler, you just turn the mat instead of the piece. But if you don't have a rotating mat, no worries. Now that I have those two 
clean edges done, I have three sides I can eyeball. So I got the 45, of course, on the diagonal, and I have the two sides on the, the, the size of square it needs to be squared down to. So I, once again, line the three sides up, put my hand down, grab my blade, swipe, and swipe. Take away this extra. And there's a pretty square down half square triangle. Now do this with all of the others as well. I want to note that in the directions it says we're only going to be using three of these four and I went ahead and squared down the fourth of each just in case you know I'd rather have a pretty square that I don't need than a one that isn't squared down that I end up needing because I made a mistake somewhere along the way and that way this extra can be set aside and it's a nice pretty square and I can do something else that's scrappy with all these pieces. All right, we got our squares. Let's grab all, everything else and move on to the next piece of the instructions. All right, the next set of instructions is going to involve that big yellow square that we cut diagonally twice, the uh, smaller squares that we cut diagonally once, and then just the plain square background. So grab one of the yellow, one of the background, and one of the colors. We'll do the purple so we can talk about what it's going to look like. In the instructions, it so shows the red, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a different look. This is what the instructions look like. And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach these triangles to this square. You're going to do them one at a time line up that flat edge you will have a little overhang and you want that overhang don't square it up the other way make sure you have that flat edge and i like to to stitch with that flat edge first stitch down with the triangle on top so that when we open it up we can give a good press once that seam is done look a little something like this you move on to the next one and you do the exact same thing line that flat edge up next to each other so you're getting that corner all lined up again you'll see you have the little hangover on the one side stitch the quarter of an inch and press it open all right so I'm going to do this half of this square I'll take a few pictures along the way and we'll then talk about attaching it to the big yellow. To the sewing machine. All right, we're at that last step for the square. As you can imagine, we're gonna turn this over and put it on top of the yellow and we're gonna do this last seam. I'm going to throw a couple of pins in, but I do want to point out that this cross of threads, that's supposed to be the quarter of an inch. So that's what we're going to aim for when we stitch along this side. So let me go take this to the sewing machine. We're going to press it open towards that yellow side and uh, we'll be finished with this block to the machine. All right, and there's the finished block. I've trimmed off the little dog ears because I had a little crooked edge over here. It will say in the instructions what size this should measure at. And you're gonna wanna do this with the three other colors as well so that you have four blocks that looks very similar to that. So when you finish all these, let's gather everything together and let's put this block together. All right, gather all your pieces. So you'll want three of those half square triangles. Match it with that half uh, yellow piece that we just finished and grab the rectangle pieces. So I'm just gonna do this purple one here. You'll need one rectangle piece with the three and you will see in the, uh, the notes that you doing the red ones, but I'm doing the purple because I like purple. The 
layout looks a little something like this. All of the half square triangles are going in the one direction. And then there's that yellow right there. So it's all about putting these pieces together. We're gonna do them in different steps. So if you look at this as rows, we're gonna put the one row together and the second bigger row together. So the top row, we do these two seams here. We're gonna press towards the right. So in that direction of the, kind of like the arrow going this way. And then we'll do this bottom one. And this is going to be get pressed the opposite way because these this seam and this seam will then nest together when we do that seam right here and it'll get pressed down towards that bigger piece so let me take a few pictures as i piece all these together and i'll see you at the end with a finished quarter of a block this will be one quarter of the big block to the sewing machine All right, there's our four blocks all done and ready to go. You can see the back right there. So we now we want to put these in the order that they're going to be in the big block. So as you can see in the book, purple, lower left, blue, red, and green. And it makes this pretty little pinwheel, which we're going to see in one of the accent strips later as well. All right, so you got your four blocks for the big block. I'm sure you can figure this out. We're going to do it in rows first. Row and row. This seam and this seam, we're going to press the top towards the left and the bottom towards the right. That way when we do that middle seam there in the middle, it'll nest. And we're going to press up towards that blue and red side of the block. So let me take this to the machine. I'll take a few pictures as I go and I'll see you at the end with a finished main block. All right, and there's that finished main block. So we can give this guy a nice press use some starch or something, set them aside, and let's move on to those accent strips. Here we go. All right, lots of fun stuff here. Let's just review what we got. From background three, we're doing 10 rectangles, and background four gets 12 squares. And from one, two, three, five, and eight, cut a big square, really big square, one of each of those, and from two, three, four, six, seven, and nine, we're going to do two squares, and that's going to go with these guys. So these squares will be with these, and the rectangles will be with the big squares. Let's start with those rectangles first. Oh, hey there, friends. Let's get back into it with this first set of accent strips. You can see here it's paper piecing time. That's right. One of my favorite things to do in quilting is paper piecing. I'm sure you've heard that before. This block is actually the one we have done before back in month four. So if you haven't seen Scrappy month four, go back and take a look at that in the playlist. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, what you see in the in the instructions is the rectangles are going to be these background pieces and the squares are going to be that main square so let's just talk through one of these and I'll show you what I do um, this page at the, the the end of the instructions there's two on a page so you want to print off three copies so that you get five because you're going to need five and what I like to do is I like to pre-fold all of the pieces so that way it's just easier for me to when I'm moving on from piece to piece and luckily this is a, a really simple paper piecing with just the three pieces but I do like to pre-fold it because it just makes life easier and don't we want life to be easier I'm also using a little bit of glue here 
You'll see with this main block, and I'll just put it on top so you can see that he's very generous with the amount of fabric. You can see that that's much bigger than the piece that we need, which is awesome because when you're doing paper piecing, you want all of your pieces to be at least a quarter of an inch bigger all the way around. I like to say three eighths because better safe than sorry. So I'm using a little dab of glue on the back side of that paper so that when I put that fabric down on top of it, it's just gonna help keep it steady. And that way, if I move it from the table to the sewing machine, for instance, it just gives me a little more security. Remember our mantra, fold, cut, sew, press. So here we go. Fold, and uh, because I've already folded it one way, it's easier to fold the other way. Grab your ruler. You can use your basic ruler or If you happen to have one of these lovelies, this is an add a quarter plus ruler and it's nice because I'm going to see if I can put it there in the light. You can see there's a little lip on the back side and what it does is it catches the side of that paper so that when you take your blade to cut, there's that pretty quarter of an inch you don't have to worry about. Pretty nice, huh? If you don't have that ruler, don't worry. You can absolutely use just any basic ruler. You just want to make sure that you're lining up your edge of your paper on that quarter of an inch line. I just love this guy, though. It's it's super nice. Makes paper piecing go super quick. And if you like paper piecing as much as I do, this is a tool you definitely want to get. I'll put a link in the description below to show you which one that I have. All right, I'm going to flip it over. And right along this edge, we're gonna place the fabric number two. And the fabric number two and three are the same pieces. It's that cute little rectangle. So I'm just gonna line up along the edge. Now you may not be able to see through the paper like I am, so I'll use my, my pencil. This line that I'm drawing is that outside square. That's the outer quarter of an inch. And the reason I'm drawing that is that I want to make sure that uh, we're aware that when this gets sewn and then folded open, it's actually going to cover up all the way. You don't want to accidentally pull the fabric too far and then when it's folded open, it doesn't hit uh, the entire block. So just a little tip, a little trick to help things line up nicely. I'm going to grab a pin. And I'm going to pin all through all three pieces, the two pieces of fabric and the paper. And I'm pinning as far away from where I'm going to seam as I can. Because if, if I put the pin right here, it's going to hit my needle. So I'm, I'm giving it as much space as I can. All right. Now the next step is sew. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to start right here at that corner. And I'm going to sew all the way through the quarter of an inch here. I'm not going to do it here because I know I have another seam on the other way. So let me take this to the sewing machine real quick. I'll do this stitch. I'll press it open and then we'll come back and talk about piece number three. Quick before I leave, I want to make sure to mention that just as before, you want to shorten your stitch length. The more stitches you have per inch, makes preparation marks in the paper, whatever paper you're using, whether you're using just office paper or foundation paper like Carol Doax, it's gonna make more holes. That means when at the end, when we tear it off, it'll be easier to take the paper off. So make sure you're making the stitch length at least 14 stitches per inch, um, which is about a 1.5, I believe, uh, and make that adjustment. Also not a bad idea to throw in a new needle whether before or after this one because paper has a tendency of doling the needle out just a little quicker. So let me go stitch this and I'll be right back. All right, so I finished that one seam. I don't know if you can see the stitches along the edge and I stopped right there. So now we do the other stitch. So just like before, remember our mantra, fold, cut, Flip it over. 
just so you can see where my edges are. Place the fabric along that edge. That way we know it's going to flip over okay. Throw a pin in. Now we're going to sew and then I will press it open. I'll be right back. All right, and there we go. There's the finished three pieces. Let me flip her over so you can see how pretty that looks. Isn't that nice? Awesome. All right, so the last step in these blocks is to square it down. And remember, this white space between the line and the block, that's the quarter of an inch. So we want to make sure you leave that in. So when you put your ruler up against it, line that quarter of an inch right up on the block line and give it a swipe. All right, there we go. So you're going to do this four more times with the other four colors. And then it's up to you whether you want to leave the paper on and piece the row together or if you want to take the paper off. It's kind of up to you. Let me just show you what it looks like when I take the paper off. I'm going to do it in opposite seams. So I did this seam first between one and two and the second seam is between one and three. So I'm going to take this number three piece off first. I like to fold it open and score it with my finger or you can take a pin or a stiletto and do a little light scoring along the seam and then you just rip away. And you see because we use so many stitches per inch how easy that came off. We'll do the other side as well. I'm just going to score with my thumbnail and peel away. And then I just give a little pull on the fabric here so that last piece comes off. Here we go. So pretty. Thing of beauty. All right. Go ahead and do this four more times with the other colors, and I'll meet you at the end with five finished triangle paper pieces. Get to sewing. All right, so there's the five triangles, tri-rex as it were, all done in paper pieced. I've given them a nice press. Um, so let's talk about the order. In the book, the red one is our lonesome guy, and the order for the triangles is yellow, turquoise, purple, and orange. Now I'm going to mix it up a little bit, guys, because I have two prints and two colors, and I don't want my two plain colors next to each other. So I'm going to mix it up and just flip these two. So my order is going to look a little different than what you see in the pattern. All right, so oh, it's this one that's upside down. The first and the third triangles point down and the second and the fourth point up. So it gets you get kind of that zigzag with the, the different triangles. It's kind of cute. It's just like the, the previous month that we did this in. All right, so just as you can imagine, we're going to seam all of these together and we're going to press everything towards the right. I do want to point out that just as previous in the notes for us, there is a ruler out there called the tri rec ruler that will you can cut the pieces and piece it just like a regular piece block instead of paper piecing. You can check out that. I'll try to remember to put a link to that ruler in the description as well, just in case, you know, if you're not as big a paper piecing fan as I am. All right, I'm going to take some pictures as I go and I'll see you at the end with this finished accent strip. Back in a moment. A 
All right, there's the finished accent strip. And remember the red one is our little lonesome guy. So give it a nice press, set it aside, and let's work on the next accent strip. All right, the last accent strip is the background four squares and the two the two from each of the five colors or six colors excuse me and you can see that I've already drawn some lines you can guess what we're doing that's right half square triangles a bunch of half square triangles and since I've already covered half square triangles in this video I'm not going to do a whole lot right now except to say that I have everything drawn that middle line is going to be my cut line and the two solid lines are my stitch lines and I'll pair them up with each of these lovely squares over here on the right and make a few half square triangles so I'm gonna make some half square triangles you go make some half square triangles and then we'll get together and we'll talk about what we're gonna do with all of them so I'll see you in just a bit all right there's all my half square triangles and I've also squared them all down there's four of each we're turning each of these into a pinwheel. So let me just take a minute to lay everything out so you can see what order they're in. Right there I can get most of it on the camera not, not quite all of it so it goes orange blue dark teal red green and then the purple and you can see they're all little pinwheels just kind of like that big yellow block in the main uh, the main block that we did all right so we're going to piece these together in rows first because he's having us after we piece each row we're gonna press everything in the top row towards the right except for that last one because it's going to be pressed towards the left because it'll match up with something at the end and then if you look at the other side it's this exact same to the to the left except for that one because it's going to again nest so these two are going to go in the same direction and these two seams are going to go in the same direction i know that seems a little confusing just be sure you're looking at the instructions and you're paying attention to which air which way the arrows are pointing um, once the two rows are done we're going to put the rows together and we're going to press up towards the top and if that's a little bulky for you in the centers feel free to open that seam up because I just might do that myself all right is there anything else I want to do here I do have the two planes here in the center but I'm okay with that since I have prints on either side yeah I'm okay I like this let's get to some PC and I'll just take a few pictures along the way since a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory and then of course I'll take a picture at the back side before we move on to piecing the entire block together until then though let's get piecing All right, so here's the finished pinwheel accent strip. Give everything a nice press. I did a best press on it just to make sure it's really flat. Let me pull up just this one side so that you can see. I did go ahead and open this seam up because it is a little bulky there in that center and it seemed to lay a little bit better and a little flatter. All right, so now it's time to grab all of our pieces and start putting this main this block together let's go all right there friend let's put month 11 together we got all the pieces that main block the two accent strips and of course we got all of our sashing pieces for the background let's get going so this top big one goes up in the top left the cute little triangles on this side and remember the little lonesome he's here at the bottom take your pinwheels match it up with that triangle right there with that green pinwheel and now all we need to do is fill in with all of these 
little background pieces. So we got two smaller sashings for the big block. The two big sashings go on the top and the bottom. There we go. And let's see, there's our little lonesome square. He's in the corner. And the big ones, the big pieces, will flank either side of that accent strip. So, all right, let's review putting this together and I'll take some pictures as I go. I'm gonna start up here at that big block. We're gonna sash it up first. So I'm gonna do the sides and then I'm gonna press away from the big block. Then I'm gonna do the top and the bottom sashing and press away from the big block. So that side is done. I'm gonna move over here to the right. I'm gonna attach the background to the cute little triangle paper piecing. I'm gonna press towards that background so that the left is done, the right is done. Let's just do this one seam here in the middle. The middle. <laughs> and press towards the big block. So the top part is done. Let's move all the way to that bottom row. And I could put these two backgrounds on either side of that triangle. I'm gonna press towards the background, so away from the triangle. I can now attach the bottom row to that pinwheel row. And I'm gonna press it down. So the top is done, the bottom is done. It's just this one seam that's left. Press up towards that big top part. And remember, all of these little areas and these four corners right here, those are all gonna nest. So that's a great place to throw some pins in to make sure you're lining things up nicely. And yeah, let's get going. I'll take a few pictures as I go and I'll see you at the end with a completed month 11. Let's go. All right, there we go. We have finished month 11. Look how pretty it is. I love the pinwheel here and then the repeat to the pinwheel there. Beautiful little triangles, lots of triangles in this block. Hey, you did a great job and guess what? You only have one more month left. That's right, this block of the month is coming to an end, but if you want to continue the fun with me, stay tuned at the end of this video because I have a really cool announcement to tell you about. Let me turn this guy over so you can see the pretty back. I always like to show my pressing. Very nice. Thank you so much for joining me along this adventure of the Illusion Sampler Block of the Month program. And be sure to check out all the information at the bottom, all those links and fun stuff. And I will see you next month for month 12. Have a great one. Keep quilting. Hey friends, thanks for joining me during the Illusion Sampler Block of the Month. And join me next year for Solar, this beautiful quilt, also a Banyan Boutiques Block of the Month for 2023. And join me by signing up at AdirondackQuilts.com as I lead a group of quilters through this one. See you then!